Hello. Welcome to Vado Day 4. Vlog every day in October. I have the boys with me eating breakfast. Let's see. Let's see if you can see them. The video quality is not the, that good with this one, but Judah made it in the video. Say hi, Judah. Hi. <laughs> hi. Yep. Yeah, and Luther's upstairs playing with toys. Okay, well. I tried to think of a quick, quick video because I really only have like Daddy. four minutes left before Mommies. they start to get Mommies. rowdy here because they're Mommies. almost done with breakfast. So, Mommy. Yes, this is Mommy's Bible. So I thought I'd do Not quiet, favorite Bibles. No. Um, Bibles. If you can hear me with them in the background. Hey, boys. Boys, let's try to be quiet. Hey, Judah, let's try to be quiet while Mommy's shooting the video. Okay? Yeah. All right. First up, I'm just going to go through two real quick is the Jesus Storybook Bible. Uh, this is fantastic. It has a really big focus on redemptive history um, throughout. It talks about, which is basically God's plan to redeem his people and Jesus is mentioned throughout. That's, you know, says Jesus Storybook Bible. So it really has a focus on God's glory um, which is a little bit different than I think some of the Bibles or footnotes or children's Bibles that you read that are more like, what can we learn about ourselves from this story? And I think it's better to look at, you know, God and his glory. Yes, I'll get you more. Why don't you eat your banana right now? Okay. And God and his glory throughout the stories. What can we learn about God from this story? Um, through what the author is actually intending to write. So that's what this book really focuses on. And that's what I think we should focus on, really, um, when we read the Bible. Hey, let's not do that. It makes the camera shake. Judah, Judah, please do not do that. Eat your banana, okay? Eat your oatmeal. Okay, another great thing about this Bible is um are the pictures i don't know if you can see they're like fantastic pictures um just really really great really entertaining for the kids to look at sometimes the stories are a little long like especially judah can't get through a lot of them so we'll divide them in half but just really really good stories um and if you don't understand a story, I don't know, I actually recommend adults to read this. And my husband was just saying he listened to a sermon where somebody big, like D.A. Carson or John, pa I don't know who it was, said uh, that pastors <laughs> should actually read the Jesus Storybook Bible for kids. Because it's fabulous, like because of the redemptive history, because of the focus on God and his glory, um, and not as much on us. I think it's great. So, Jesus Storybook Bible, awesome. And then, um, real quick, the Bible I recommend for adults is the ESV Study Bible. Hi, Judah. And I'll go, well, I guess I should read real quick. It's a, um, let's see, I'll read here. I don't know what website this is, but um, it's an a, essentially literal translation that seeks to capture the precise wording of the original text and personal style of each Bible writer. It aims for the word-for-word -word correspondence while taking into account differences of grammar, syntax, and idiom between current literary, literary English and original Greek and Hebrew languages. It seeks to be transparent to the original text, revealing as directly as possible to the reader and the structure of the meaning of the original. So, um, taking it takes into context, basically. Uh, all the different books and the different writers. Um, also, there's, well, I love, my personal favorite thing about this Bible are the footnotes because some really, really big, just awesome guys. Oh, wow, you're hungry today. Why don't you drink your milk until mommy's done with the video? Um, D.A. Carson, John Piper, Mark Driscoll, I don't know, lots of big, good, solid names. Came, came together to make these footnotes, to edit them, to put them together, and so they're fabulous. I think every footnote really takes into account um, 
what the possible meaning could be and what the likely meaning they think is. And so it will go through um, different explanations for a text that's confusing, which I think is fabulous. Real quick, let me show you. Is this the temple? Yeah, that's funny. I flipped right to it. Well, so, okay, so this is an example. It has some awesome, awesome pictures and maps. And, you know, do you know, like, okay, so this part is in, I guess this is First Kings, but the temple being built earlier on in the Bible, um, the pictures of that are crazy, crazy awesome, too. So you read it, and you're like, what are they talking about? And then you look at this map, or this picture, and you're like, this is great. I can totally understand it now. And it has the references. It points to, like, where in the Bible it's explaining these things. So, I don't know. That's just one example. There's a lot more in here. It's really good Bible. It's really heavy, um, which I didn't like. I wanted a smaller Bible. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you got to deal with that, I guess, for all the footnotes. So, those are my favorite Bibles. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, say bye-bye, guys. Bye. Judah, can you say bye-bye? One -bye? for you, and next thing for you. Judah pushed his way. He keeps pushing his way out, and it's we just got moved up to this toddler seat from the uh, high chair, and he's not doing very well with it. He's very messy. But anyway, we're working on that. See you tomorrow.